So let's get started. We've got a very powerful training segment for you today. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Do make sure that you keep um, your paper handy, you write down, you take notes, because you're going to learn things, you're going to learn concepts, you're going to learn tips and strategies that will allow you to really become successful. Let's get straight into my training. And this is what I want to talk about. What do the most successful leaders in Nexorize have in common? That's the question that I want to go through with you. And also at the end, you will find the answer. And that's what it is. Very simple, very straightforward. So let's go. Uh, Warren Buffett was conducting a, a, a training program, a session. And uh, after his training program, a lady once came up to him and asked him a question. And the question was very simple. This was a question. What, according to you, is the best skill required for success? And he said, it's very simple. What he found out that the most successful people in the world, the leaders in the world, the great entrepreneurs in the world had one skill in common. And that skill is communication. He said that one skill will enable you to become a success story in any entrepreneurial environment, regardless of your IQ level, EQ level, intelligence, your hierarchy, your education level, whatsoever it may be. Communication. And the same applies for Nexarize. So in Nexarize, how is it that we communicate every day is by presenting presentations to our guests and presentations to our business partners and our team, which is training, but you are presenting. So what I want to talk to you today about is the fact of how you can master and do effective presentations. That is the concept. So let's get started. By the end of this training, my objective would be that you will know or you will be reminded of mastering effective presentations. So here we go. What is the objective of your presentation? If you just remember this one image, before you do any kind of presentation or training, or even if it's a testimonial, it's a presentation. Remember, the objective of it is there is a problem. You need to get to a solution. And in the middle is the idea. So your objective is to find out the problem and give the solution through the idea. That's the objective of your presentation. So that's the way you will be able to always start on the right note. Before I got started to do this presentation today, right now, I was thinking about the same thing. What's the problem out there in the field? What's the solution? And what's the idea that gets you to the solution? So... If you identify the problem, you can always provide the right solution. So here we go, building rapport and identifying problems. So one of the things that really helped me is when I'm actually going to do a presentation, especially when it comes to a guest, is remember, you don't want to go straight into presenting. You really want to build rapport and you want to identify their problem. And if you identify their problem, if you can give a solution to it, you can be successful. It was Richard Branson, you said, who was asked the question, how can you become a millionaire? He said, very simple, solve a million people's problems. How do you become a billionaire? Solve a billion people's problems. So here's the, what do you want to do whenever you're sitting in front of a new guest, especially online, it's even more difficult than face-to-face -face because face-to-face -face is so much more powerful. But now with Zoom presentation, online presentation, you've got to learn the skill of building rapport online and how identifying the, the actual problems. So here's what I always do. Before I just go straight into asking them to ask me any questions, if a guest is on the call, I always start by saying, before I tell you a bit about myself, tell me a bit about yourself. What do you do professionally? Now imagine if you didn't use a statement before I tell you about myself, this person will be thinking, hey, I've just been invited to this a webinar and this random person is asking me questions. But when you say, before I tell you about myself, I'm offering, I'm going to tell you about myself. Tell me a bit about my, about yourself. What do you do professionally? It's a great way to start. Now, most of the time when I present, uh, especially online environment, I like to present in a small number. So it's controllable. So if I have five guests, I ask them each or four guests. If it's a large number, I avoid this because you won't be able to get um, asking questions with each and every guest uh, who's on that call. So this is how I start. Before I tell you about myself, tell me a bit about yourself. What do you do professionally? Then one of my objectives is to identify their hot button or their problems. 
It could be money, it could be time. And then, so let's say uh, I got a guest on the call and that guest would say, um, hey buddy, hi, nice to meet you, man. Welcome to the call. Uh, before I tell you a bit about myself, tell me what do you do? Tell me a bit about yourself. What do you do professionally? He says, well, uh, I'm a nurse. I said, great, okay. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, 11 years. And I always ask, well, you must really love it. Now, when I say that, I get a response and I normally can use that to find their hop button. Well, it pays the bills. And I'm like, okay, great. So it pays the bills and what, what would be the future prospects? How long do you see, see yourself doing this? What are the things that motivates you? So what I do is I ask be a few questions and whatever answer they give me, the third thing that I do is I relate with them. And this is how I relate to, oh, you're a nurse? Great, hey, you know what? My mom used to be a nurse. And I remember, you know, she used to come back home after work and man, her knees used to hurt because of the amount of standing she used to do. It's so busy right now, isn't it? I honor your profession. I have to say, I completely honor your profession. And I, I understand how wonderful and valuable it is that what you do. But again, I can say it is not easy, is it? And I relate somehow or the other with that person. So I find something in common with them that allows me to build rapport. See, it was in the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. You know, Warren Buffett at that time, and he told the lady, hey, listen, communication skills is the most important skills. He actually went to the Dale Carnegie Institute, you know, to learn about communication. So Dale Carnegie said in one of his key elements of achieving rapport with someone is relate with them. Somehow or the other, relate with the other individual. So that's what you want to do, relate with that person. So these are the three steps. Here's another book that I'll strongly recommend that'll really help you in your business is a book by Alan Pease, all right? It's a very quick 30 minute read, or it's also available on YouTube. It's called Questions Are the Answers. How you ask the right questions to get the right answers. Also, he, in this, this book is very powerful. It says that when you say something, people might not agree with you, but if you get somebody else to say something that you already want them to say, and that was your point, then you got them to agree with you. That's relationship. So very powerful book. Uh, you can get it on YouTube. It's a very quick listen, or you can read it very quickly. I strongly recommend you to read that book. So once you find, I've built rapport with my guest. I've identified what their hot button is. Maybe it's the fact that they want to make more money. Maybe they want more time in their life. Maybe they want to do more. Uh, this is not what they do. Because remember the fact, we have knowledge of the fact that in the Western world, more than 90% of people don't love their jobs. They actually do the jobs for the salary to actually survive. They don't love it. So most people don't love what they do. They do what they do because they need to survive. So you will be able to ask questions and identify and relate with them, okay? So now your objective of your presentation is you've identified the problem. And now when you're presenting the solution, the idea, that's Nexterize. Because Nexterize should fulfill their problem. That's the whole objective of the presentation. And you can bring the information that you've learned from the original rapport building into your presentation. Now, first thing, before even you go ahead, you need to understand, you need to have 100% faith and belief that Nexterize is the solution. Because you can't have a 99% belief and 1% doubt. Because if you have 1% doubt, you are out. And I've done a training, it's on the Nexterize YouTube channel. Also, it's on the resources section of your control center called The Secret. They give you 35 reasons for why I show you that next rise is the best career. So I'm not going to go into it, but when you know this, you're kind of 100% convinced that next rise is the way forward. Okay, so you're now building rapport. You build rapport with this individual. You ask a few questions. You've identified their hot buttons. Now, this is what is happening in their head. What are the guests feeling? All right. Now, remember, from a very young age, individuals are kind of brainwashed into thinking that salespeople are bad, all right? That even though sales is essential to be a success story. So what happens, what are the guests feeling? A lot of guests are feeling skeptical. They're not fully in yet, okay? So you've got to understand that. The individual that you're seeing right now reminded me of a guest that I had. And in my entire presentation, he looked at me like that. This is what they're feeling. So your objective is, they're thinking, what am I doing here? Okay, what is it that I'm here right now and they're skeptical? So there's a big bomb there. And if you don't get rid of that bomb, if you don't diffuse that bomb, you will not be able to get through to them. Remember that because people come with their own, uh, actually they say the first impression, you know, they'll make impressions, they've got their own prejudices and all that kind of stuff. So you got to understand, they have a feeling of uncertainty right now. So your role is to diffuse it and defusing a bomb. 
I always use that in a presentation. Before I give them information, I diffuse the actual element of the fact that they need to be worried about anything. So this is what I call the diffuser. It's very powerful. You can really, really use it in your all your presentations. The first thing that I'll say is, hey, thank you so much for coming to this presentation. You know, let's say John is my team member, my, my business partner, IBO, and he has invited a guest. John has invited a guest called Ahmed, okay? So here's what I'll say, hey, Ahmed, thank you so much for attending this webinar or this presentation. You are here today because John has seen great potential in you. Okay, now what you've done is you have edified the guest and you've made him feel comfortable and welcome. And he also feels good because he now believes that John, Ahmed believes John sees great potential. Now this is the magic line, my best line. I use this for invitations and I use it for my presentations as well. All right, it's a very powerful line that I strongly recommend you to use. It may or may not be for you. Now, when you say this to a guest or you know to a prospect, in the back of their head, that fear of I'm now going to be sold to, hey, listen, I need to hide my wallet. I need to hide my credit card. This guy's going to take money from me. That goes off because you have told that person it may or may not be for you. So this person has got to get out of jail free cried if that's what he thinks he's going to be. All right. So it's a great line that you can use in your presentations. It's great because what it does is it diffuses the element of, okay, I'm here to get some information. And the third thing that I use is, let me quickly explain the Nexarize opportunity. See, oh, you're not there to sell the Nexarize opportunity. You're not there to sell it. You're there to explain it. So explain is a very powerful word. Now, when you use the word explain, all that it means is you have an opportunity, you're explaining the opportunity. That's it. So if you've got a negative individual at the end of it, if they ask you questions, you can say, hey, listen, I'm just explaining the presentation to you. That's all. I'm just explaining the information to you. This is a great diffusing tool. It's great when you use it because one, it removes all kinds of barriers that the other guest might be thinking. He'll be now thinking, wow, you know what? Ahmed thinks highly of me and I'm glad that he does that. It may not be for me. So, but yeah, let me have a look. And this person is explaining the opportunity. So you've removed their feelings of skepticism, of fear, and it being a sales call. Next, it's very important for you to understand what are the four questions that most guests are thinking about before you start the presentation. Most guests, most people are thinking about the four questions. Question one, what is this? Question number two, does it make sense? Question number three, can I do this? And question number four, who will support me? The objective of your presentation should be to identify their problem, let them know that Nexarize is the solution and answer these four questions. And if you have effectively answered these four questions, there's no reason why your guest would not get started with Nexarize. And that is why you wanna give the presentation of Nexarize, but you don't wanna just give any presentation. You wanna give the best presentation. So when you are presenting now, here are the, the acronym of BEST, B-E-S-T, is going to remind you of how you need to present. The first letter is B. And what does B stand for? Basic. What is basic is sticking to the fundamentals and the basics of presentation. It was Bruce Lee who said this, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So once you understood the basics and you stick to it, it's a formula, it's a recipe that works. Trust me, you're in for a winner. Now, today is Sunday and Sundays in our family in the afternoon is Sunday roast time, all right? Uh, my, four, my four children and uh, my family, we get together and we have a roast that my wife prepares. And it, it's a big thing on Sundays, all right? We have a late roast and especially we are Indian family. So we have an Indian version of the British Sunday roast, all right? And um, what, what, what are the best things about my wife is she continuously tries to, you know, explore new dishes and new recipes. But of all the times she has done that, I really appreciate that she does it. But I tell you, you know what? The first one that you did where you stuck to the basics, that was my favorite. Many a times, but she still explodes. No problem. I'm, I'm okay with that. But when you stick to the basics, you don't go wrong. 
the fundamentals. So what are the fundamentals? Now, what does basics and fundamental mean? It simply means this. You want to keep your presentation simple and you want to keep your presentation duplicable. Here's what it, the two things it needs. It needs to look simple and sound simple. All right. At the end of your presentation of the next size opportunity, if your guest comes up to you, because I remember Ahmed Mukta saying this, if your guest coming up to you and says, wow, that was an amazing presentation. I don't know how you did that. That's your worst presentation. If the person who is watching you present believes for one second that they can't do what you just did, you have just killed the presentation. Because without duplication, network marketing is a job. See, it doesn't matter what works. It matters what duplicates. Remember that. And that is key. So that's what B stands for. You want to keep it as basic and simple and duplicable as possible that even a 10-year-old, once they listen to your presentation, should be able to explain the business back to you. What does E stand for? Enthusiastic and emotional. See, it was one of my greatest inspiring, I mean, one of the most greatest inspirers in the world, you know, who inspired me the most, Maya Angelou, who said this, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Now, when I'm showing all this to you right now, when I'm speaking to you right now, you might forget many of the words that I said, but you won't forget how you felt. That's the key difference. Your presentation has to have enthusiasm and it needs to be emotional that it connects to the heart. Now, let me tell you something. 95% of your success in Nexarize will be with direct proportion to your level of enthusiasm. Remember that. Because if you're not enthusiastic about Nexarize, if you're not enthusiastic about how and where you're going to be with this business, the people looking at you and seeing you will see you, they'll see through you, and people can smell a phony a mile away. Remember that because people don't follow people with money. People follow people with vision. Remember that. Let me repeat that again. It's very powerful. People don't follow people with money. People follow people with vision. They need to see is does this man or does this woman, is that person enthusiastic enough that if I follow that person, I know that no matter what happens, they're going to get to the end. They're going to achieve success. That's the key. Now imagine I was presenting this right now without enthusiasm, because this is not how I normally speak at home and normally with my friends. How I normally speak is like this. This is how I normally speak in front of my friends. But imagine I was going to do a training just like this. But what happens is this. After a while, you start to get sleepy because there's no enthusiasm. It's monotonous. So that's the reason why every presentation is an act where you have to use the concept of throwing your voice. And let me just throw my voice. This is a throwing of voice where actors do this, stage players do this. Every presentation is like that. You, whatever happens outside of the presentation is outside. You might have family problems. You might have fought with your spouse. You might have had a bad day at work. Well, when you start to present next rise, that enthusiasm, those emotions should come out straight away. And that is why the best communicators in the world were always enthusiastic and they were emotional. They connected to people's hearts. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King, every time he spoke, um, the hairs of my hand used to stand up. He used to connect. And that is why it said the height of your enthusiasm is greater than the depth of your knowledge. So when you present, your guest must not just hear you and see you, they need to feel you, remember that. And if you didn't get them to connect to your heart or you haven't connected to their heart, that presentation is meaningless. So here's how, how it helps me with how when I present next size, a framework of my next size presentation. This is how it should be. The first one, you should always connect to the heart. And how do you connect to the heart? By talking about your why, your goal and what moves you, all right? So when I start, when I present, I'll always start with by saying, hey, listen, you know, I was really sick and tired of being sick and tired. My parents used to work extremely hard. And even after being afflicted with a dangerous disease, they were still going to work. Why? Because they had to pay the mortgage. And I said, hey, as being a responsible son, I wanted to change their lives, but I myself couldn't change mine because I was stuck in a rat race. So when an opportunity like this came by, it gave me the, 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 the first time a chance in my life to go to my father and mother and say, hey, dad, mom, you know what? You really don't need to work anymore because I've got a cupboard. 
So you want to connect with a very powerful story and you need to have a powerful goal. You need to have a powerful why. It could be your children. It could be your spouse. Hey, I, I, I'm not spending enough time with my spouse. I rarely get to see her and I'm sick of it. And that's the reason why I'm doing this. So you need to have a powerful why. That connects to people's hearts because facts tell, stories sell. The second thing, the framework is once you connect to their heart, you need to connect to their head. And that's the content of the actual presentation, the one to 10 slides. Then you need to connect to their hands, get them to move of being a business partner of yours or as a customer, take action. And then you close or you enroll or you end the presentation by connecting back to their heart by telling a story. And that story could be, if you don't have a success story yet, use somebody else's success story. And then what you can do till you get a story of your own, use their story. Hey, I want to talk to you about this gentleman called Steven Alvaro. He got started with Nexerize just three months ago. And literally in his second month, he got, he got ranked up to a position called TC5000. Think about that. 5,000 pounds worth of residual income every single month that comes in residually. That's more than full-time income. You know, he was able to change his life dramatically and he's building a big business. Connect with somebody's story. This should be the framework of any presentation that you do. Uh, 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 it could be a presentation one to 10 that you're doing with a guest or even a training. You connect to the heart, give the content to the head, then they connect to their hands and then end with getting them to give a story. So B is basic, E is enthusiastic and emotional. S stands for, it needs to be short. Now, short is so, so important because here's what it is. Morton Blackwell, he was a very, very powerful leader. And he said this, the mind can absorb no more than the seed can endure. In Liju's words, it says, the mind can only bear what the, sorry, the mind can only take in what the rear can bear. Very powerful. You need to keep it short. Remember your guests, especially guests have come in with the mindset that it's going to be a short presentation. If you take it too long, you've killed the presentation. Now that is the reason why what we suggest your presentation should be Oh, scientifically, it's 18 minutes, the average presentation time. And this was done by TED Talks. You know, if you've listened, I listen to a lot of TED Talks, very powerful, very, very useful. And they have given every speaker a time slot of 18 minutes. Now, what is that for? They know that after 18 minutes, people switch off because most people don't have the capacity to be that attentive if they're coming to something for the first time. That's why TED Talks are 18 minutes. So knowing that information, your presentation to a guest for the first time should be around that number. And here's what I normally take. For rapport or building and identifying the problems, I take about five minutes. For presentation, the one to 10, 15 minutes max. And then enrolling them, 10 minutes. So the whole process, 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, you should be done. Because here's the reality. A bad presentation short is a good presentation. A good presentation short is the best presentation. So you've got to keep it short. That is the S. And the final letter T out of best, it simply means you've got to be trained. It's a reality around the world. Amateurs wing it. Professionals are trained. Now, what is it that you need to be trained in? One, you need to be trained in your script. You got to have a one to 10 script that you have actually recorded yourself and learned it. All right. And here's what you got to do. Professional actors learn their script and then work on their performance. So you want to learn the script. So here's what I did. I voice recorded my presentation. My first presentations were horrible. I'm telling you horrible. All right. But people will still sign up. That's the funny part. Because remember, people don't forget what he said, but they'll, they'll, they actually will remember how he made them feel. But a lot of people didn't sign up. And I, if, if I had known this information then, I could have actually done a better job. So, so my first thing I used to do is I used to record my presentation very long. And then I cut it down, 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 I cut it down. All right. You know who has heard my presentations the most? It was my steering wheel and my mirror. When I'm driving, I'm presenting. And in front of my mirror, I'm presenting. Now, here's the funny part. When I'm presenting to the mirror, I know that if the person in the mirror get excited with the information that I'm giving them, then my presentation is effective. 
And that's the script. So here's what of you, every one of you on the call, your ETT 100, you are ready to present. Okay, so don't wait, because remember, every single professional master was once an amateur. You've got to be bad before you get good. You got to get good before you become the best. All right, that's the rule. So here's what is the thing. So here's what you got to do. Number one, practice it in your head. Have this presentation. All right, this 20 minute presentation, maximum, this 20 minute script, I'm telling you, will literally give you financial freedom. Next, practice it in front of your mirror. And the person in the mirror should be excited to get started with you by the finish. Next, practice in front of your friends and family who supports you, trusted ones, and tell them, listen, don't tell me it's nice. Give me real feedback. I also would recommend you to present in front of your mentors because mentors give you good, real feedback. And feedback is a food of champions, all right? I've got a lot of feedback. I, I ask people for a lot of feedback. Every time when they, I finish a presentation, they say, hey, Liju, that was fantastic. I ask them, hey, listen, what do you think I could have done better? Really, tell me. And telling you, sometimes they give, people will see things that you have never seen. It's, you, you got, everybody's got blind spots. It's called scotoma. You can't see it, all right? But people can see things. And when they see it and they inform you, it's worth its weight in gold. There are people giving me feedback that I never knew for 20 years, 30 years. Maybe even if it's about how we pronounce a word. And that's the key difference there. And the final thing, just do it. If you don't start doing it, if you don't start practicing, I'm telling you, you're delaying your success. Remember this very powerful point. The person who holds the marker makes the most money. The person who holds the marker, that's the presenter, makes the most amount of money. Now, here's some of the things that you want to remember when you are writing your script or when you're using uh, your presentation. Develop a script that you're comfortable with that works and then master it, okay? Next, don't change it. Many a times I've seen leaders, you know, who come in, they will listen to somebody in a presentation and they will pick one line from that presenter, then another line from another presenter, and then another line from another presenter. And they keep changing their script now, what happens is the person's listening to them, they start to change and then they change and then change and it becomes non-duplicable. So stick to a script, master it, and then don't change it. Kiss, keep it short and simple. Here's a very powerful rule in our business. If it's not necessary to say, it's necessary not to say. Think about every line that you said and apply this rule. Does that guest or prospect really need to know that? Was that necessary? And if it's necessary not to say, it's necessary not to say. Then keep it accurate. If you've not heard a senior presenter say it, don't say it. Don't say or do anything that could offend anyone and make them feel uncomfortable. And I'm telling you, in the years that I have been and seen and sat in presentations and the number of times where I've been uncomfortable, I'm telling you is in your I got a number of stories, but I did give feedback. So here are the three deadly sins of a presentation. Number one, there are three deadly C's. Don't make it cheesy. I've heard people say so much cheesy stuff, it's crazy. And you know what I mean by cheesy. People cut to the chase. They don't build rapport. They get a guest in front of them and they just see a pound sign or a dollar sign, you know, or a krona sign on top of the guest. They don't build any kind of rapport. They don't actually find out what is it that motivates that other individual. They go, hey, hi, and they go straight and cut to the chase. And it's it's horrible. Next, cash. Hey, buddy, do you want to do you, do you want your bank account to look like your mobile phone number? Well, next rise is the place to be. No, three deadly sins, cheesy. Cutting to the chase and cash. Have you ever been somewhere to a networking event and somebody gets up and says, hey, listen, I'm going to show you a way of how in your spare time you can actually make an extra 2,000, 3,000. Immediately, people are like put off. You want to build rapport. You want to actually show them the information that, that is there in front of you and you want to do it correctly. So here are the don'ts in your script and in your presentation. Never swear or use cringeworthy verbiage. I'm telling you. Uh, the number of times I've heard that, oh, it's crazy. No religious references whatsoever. No political references. No jumpings or high fives, all right? Don't make people do things you might have seen in another motivational speaker make people jump and do that. That's not you. 
And that's not an exercise, all right? You don't want to make people feel uncomfortable, all right? High fives as well. Don't demand that people stand. When we go and do live presentation, it doesn't happen Zoom, but live presentations, don't make all your guests stand up. I've seen that happen many times. Uh, don't ask people to read. Or the number of times I've, I've seen when the, the presenter will ask all the guests to look at the screen and read like it's a classroom. It's like patronizing the guests. Guests get uncomfortable, all right? Next, don't pick on a guest. All right, it's the worst thing that you can do. You'll put them off there and then. Don't ridicule anyone in the audience. Oh, I've seen this happen live. All right. And the next one, last one is no next sir, I speak or in jokes. Uh, I still remember uh, once, a, once a presenter and I was there in the room and a presenter was, was a, uh, it, it was a traditional British man who was presenting the business. And we were all there in the room and he, he turned his presentation and into a training as well. It was crazy. So he said, he said something like this. He said, hey, yeah, so everybody, this is what we do. It's talking about building a team. So you can earn residual income. And then not only that, you can earn residual income from the customers that your team brings in. So you can bring a team. So all you have to do is you have to invite them. We show them the presentation. And at the end of the presentation, if they're ready to sign up, they're red apples. They want to think about it. They're green apples. And if they don't want to build a business, they're just uh, rotten brown ones. And there's two things that really got me that day, the mistakes. Number one is he called rotten brown ones instead of rotten brown apples. And number two, I'm sitting in that room with a lot of brown Asians who's now listening to the one if they, if you're rotten brown ones, get rid of them. All right, so this kind of stuff happen. And you wanna make sure it's not you. And if someone in your team does it, give them feedback. Because once you give them feedback, you know. Don't talk about nexterized language that people don't have. Once you go in a presentation and say, hey, how you build a team is very simple. You find one person, you tap root them till you find a leader. A guest doesn't know what tap rooting means. So you wanna avoid those kind of nexterized speak in all times, okay? Next, what is T? The second T, the first one is script. The second one is called staging. You wanna be staged correctly. If you're in a live presentation in a room and you're on a stage, you need to know where you wanna stand, what your position would be, knees locked. But most people right now, what do we do? We do online presentations. So what I want to do is I want to show you what we do in terms of online presentation. There are three rules of staging. Number one, you have to look professional. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Let me give you some example. This is what unprofessional staging looks like. So this is a Zoom meeting. And these are people in the actual Zoom meeting. What's unprofessional about it? We can't even see the individuals concerned. Look at this. I'm sure you agree with me. This person does not look professional. All right. Look at this. Eating while they're in a presentation. Absolutely no. So this is this are examples of unprofessional staging. And you will see this. And if your team members are doing this, give them feedback. Next, what is professional staging? Let me give you some examples, especially in Zoom. Picking the right angle. So you can see there's a beautiful lady here. And... When she's presenting, this is what we see. Look at the angle there. And look at the angle now. You see the difference. So when you're looking and presenting, what you want to do is try and keep the camera on your computer in eye level with yourself. When you do that, the guests feel that you're speaking to them like face to face. So all you got to do is if you have a laptop, rather than looking down and seeing the, uh, you're showing your under chin to people, you know what, just put a couple of books or a stand or you actually get a laptop stand and then you can actually make it face to face. That's the right angle. Now, let me show you something about lighting. Look at this. This, this is when the person has, I've got overhead lighting. Okay, so the light is coming from above a head. So guess what happens? There is a masking that happens around, around the eyes. So as the prospect or the guest, we can't see the eyes. And remember, the eyes are the window to the soul. The eyes are very powerful. And your, present, your, your prospects and your guests need to see your eyes because it's in the eyes that they can actually see the heart to the soul. So you can see the little kind of a mask and a shadow happening around the eyes. This is side light. So she's sitting next to a window and the light is applying on one side of the face. She says, so one side of the face looks lit and the other side looks dark. Here is the right lighting. You want to get light in front of your face, direct, bright lighting. I'm very, this is very important. So you know what? You can get clip-on lights that you can put on your laptop or get a pair of ring lights. Now imagine I use a pair of ring lights here, uh, one ring light. 
if I if I switched off the ring light, this is how I would look. Do you see the difference? So get a pair of ring lights. It makes it so much professional. It makes it so clear and it makes your presentation as effective as you can be. So one, be look professional. Second, be professional. What does that mean? You're going to be in an environment. You're going to meet people. You're actually going to speak to them. What is the impression that they have to get from you? The fact that you are professional. Because who are you representing? One, you're representing an industry that is $200 billion. Two, you're representing an industry that pays $200 million in commissions to people every single day. Three, you're representing an industry that has created the most amount of millionaires on the planet. Four, you're representing Nexarize within his first few months is already a multi-million you know, pound revenueing business. So you got to represent that in front of the guests because as far as the guests are concerned, you are Nexarize. You are the face, you're the sound of Nexarize. So you've got to be professional and you've got to give the most powerful weapon that has ever been given to you. And that is your smile. When a powerful smile radiates through the screen and it opens up the back of your head and it opens up the, 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 the actual, you know, uh, the window that it allows you to get in. See, I have a seven month old daughter and as a baby, how does the baby know who to trust? Baby is psychologically programmed that when someone smiles at the baby, that is somebody the baby can trust. Use that smile. Many people, especially because it's, a, it's, it's not a normal environment and it's an artificial environment of speaking with individuals, they forget to smile while they're presenting. And it's, it's so awkward. So use that powerful smile so that you can be professional. So that when they see you, when they look at the frame, they are now looking at something that they believe that, wow, this is good. This is professional. So that's what you got to remember. As long as you've got that in the back of your head, that that's what it is. That's, that's the most important thing. Second, look at the camera while speaking. A lot of people look at the actual screen and their eyes are looking somewhere else. Look at the camera. That's way more powerful. And it really matters how you look. And it doesn't matter. You know, I've done this. Okay. People have done this. And it matters what how you look in front of your guests. As long as you look professional and you are representing a company that is changing people's life, you're on the right track. So get that frame to look professional, be professional. And final, encourage professionalism. Something that I do is before my guests come onto an actual webinar, I actually let them know what it is that they need to do and what they can expect. So this is a WhatsApp. This is one of my, uh, an image from my WhatsApp that was done on the uh, 20. Yeah, this is when I'm inviting somebody and you can see the gentleman's name is Gifford FB Peak. What that means is I peak that person on Facebook, social media. Pro is when I put their phone person's phone number. Pro means prospect, but I put pro because as if they see it, it's professional. They think it's professional. So you can see I invited this person uh, good speaking with you again. Please see your invitation to the online meeting today, Wednesday, 29th April at 12.45 p.m. Access the free webinar instructions. Go to zoom.com forward slash join, meeting ID, password, or if you have an app, click this link. Now look at the three points that I'm giving at the end of the WhatsApp message. Best viewed on a computer or tablet. It really gets me crazy when people are invited to a presentation and they're now on a phone and they're holding the phone and you're like, man, that person's going to hold that phone for 30 minutes. Can you imagine? You've already physically tied them out. How are we going to be mentally? Remember, the mind can only take in what the rear can bear. So you want to let them know, hey, best viewed on a computer or a tablet. Let them know before they come to the presentation. Next, recommend logging in a few minutes early. How many times have you invited people, guests to a presentation, and now they don't know where the mute button is, the unmute button is to connect to audio, so get them in a few minutes early so you can get all those technical elements out. And then let them know webinar will last approximately 30 minutes. So that's the beauty about it. Look at this. So I send this message. The person comes on the call. I'm absolutely ready. I got them started the presentation. Uh, remember, I did it at 12.45. Missed voice call. That person calls me back at 4.36. Calls me back at 5.25. And you can see, hey, buddy, I have two people to sign up. Can I go through one with just with you just to be clear with the process. That's an effective presentation. 
a, a person who I prospected on Facebook, made a friend, connected with that person, showed them the opportunity, got that person uh, to come on a presentation, professionally done, and that person now got two people to sign up, you know, and got ready with the process. So this is what you go. So you want to encourage professionalism from your guests. Let me tell you something that I do. If a guest comes on a call, and if for some reason, technically, they can't get their videos on, fine. But if they can't have their video on and the videos are switched off uh, and they can't work it out, I say, hey, listen, don't worry. Let You can leave this meeting right now. We'll reschedule another one. But at that time, let's have your video on. Because this, the information that I'm going to give you is very good information. And I want to explain it to you. It'll be good to have a face to the name. I do not encourage my guests to be unprofessional because if you are showing your, you know, if you are professionally presenting yourself to the guests, if they cannot be bothered to actually come on screen, be professional, listen to you and speak with you. We don't need that person because remember one thing, how anybody does anything is how they do everything. Now, this might be minor things, but these little things matter. So I have taken people off of my meetings and the person says, hey, listen, I can't switch my video on right now because my hair is in a mess. I say, hey, listen, no problem, man. I'm not here to judge. No, no, no. I can't switch my video on because my hair is in a mess. Listen, let's reschedule this meeting. Come for the next one. And at that time, you know what? I'll, I'll present the information to you that time. You know what actually happens? Rather than the guest being rude, because we're being respectful, that guest is now going to come back knowing, wanting, even more curious to know what this is all about. So encourage professionalism from your guests. At the end of the presentation, three enrolling questions. Close this. I mean, I just get this connected to my presentation. What did you like the most? Yeah, I like the fact that you get residual income. Do you see an opportunity for yourself? Yes. Great. Based on what he said, let's get you started. Boom. That's it. And I go straight. They have objections. We overcome it and we go to, hey, so based on what he said, let's get you started. So let me summarize my training today. I've gone through the objective of the presentation, knowing the objective of your presentation before every presentation is crucial. And what is the objective is uh, build rapport with your guest and identify the problem and then give the solution of Nexarize. See, people don't buy products. People buy from people who they like and trust. And then through the element of using the diffuser, the diffused element, this may or may not be for you. This person highly recommended you and said that you have high potential. Let me explain this opportunity to you. Then I talked about the characteristics of what a presentation needs to be. BEST needs to be basic and simple enthusiastic and emotional, short and trained in your script, trained in your staging. Then have I answered the four questions of the guest? What is it? Does it make sense? Can I do it? Who's going to support me? And finally, the three enrolling questions. So this is a summary of the training that we've gone through very quickly in a couple of minutes. Remember, you got 20 minutes. In a couple of minutes, I just want to quickly role play this with you in a live next size presentation. So that will help you. So imagine John has brought Ahmed as a guest. So here's what I would do. Hey, Hamid. Hey, thank you so much for coming on this call, buddy. Uh, listen, um, Ahmed's video is off. Listen, I would really like to see the person who I want to meet because John has really spoken highly of you. Could you please switch on your video? Great. Hey, thank you for obliging with me, buddy. So listen, Ahmed, before I tell you a bit about myself, tell me a bit about yourself. So what do you do professionally? You work in where? Marks and Spencers. Wow, that's big company. Amazing. Must be very busy right now, right? Yeah. And what do you do there? You're a manager. Great. How long have you been doing that for? Nine years. Wow. You must really love doing that, right? Oh, pays the bills. Yeah, listen, I know it. You know what? Because my brother used to work in retail. Many of my friends used to work in retail. It's not easy. And especially being a manager to manage. Oh, absolutely. Um, do, they, do they pay you enough uh, for what you do? No, listen, I've been there. I know the exact situation. I know exactly what it is, buddy. And that is the reason why when I was invited to have a look at something like this, it really made a huge difference to my life. You know, so listen, John said that you're somebody with great potential. And that is where I really appreciate you taking your time. This may or may not be for you, Ahmed. May or may not be for you. But my job is just to explain in the next few minutes, just explain the opportunity for you and explain next rise for you. All right. Now, listen, it, this company launched in September 2020. What does that mean? It's a ground floor opportunity. So, you know, you can grow with this company. The three founders have over 20 years of combined field experience. So they have done what we have done and extremely successful. Right now, Nexorize operates in five countries with many more to come. It's a customer acquisition company that offers products and services. But their mission is very powerful. 
to provide a global opportunity for individuals to enjoy the benefits of residual income. Mohammed, have you heard of residual income? Yes, it's simply money that you get paid every single month for the work that you did once upon a time. Imagine for the nine years, all right, that you worked in Marks and Spencer and you stopped today and you still got paid the income every single month if you stop working. Now, yes, that's residual income. I mean, I was fascinated when I saw this. Now, here's what it is. Next slide gives you an opportunity to set up your own international business online so you can work from home. These are the five countries right now. And then many more countries that you can see they're opening up. So very exciting times. Now, what's great is there's a range of products and services that you can choose from. It's amazing. They've got commercial energy and domestic energy. What is commercial energy? Any business that you recommend uh, to one of our brokers is called LA Supply. They will switch their gas electricity, save the money. You get paid, not once, every single month. We also got domestic energy, which is fantastic. Same concept, you can switch people's homes and get paid. We got mobile phone and the two service providers that we use is O2 and Vodafone. Great tariffs and exclusive deals, it's phenomenal. Get a person to switch once, come on, with O2 or Vodafone and get paid every time they pay their mobile phone bill. Can you imagine? Can, can you imagine, can someone ever live without a mobile phone and now you can get paid on this? It's absolutely brilliant. We got security alarm systems with the largest alarm provider in Europe and that's called Very Sure Alarms. Home Care Cover, amazing company where you look after your entire home, you get your customer to get their entire plumbing, drainage and all that covered and you get paid residual income every month. An amazing travel product that you can't get anywhere else. It's like a subscription program that gives you a whole range of benefits. One of it is unlimited lounge access. You know, so think about it, you know, insurance, flight insurance is brilliant. And also over 2 million hotels where you actually kind of get rates that's lesser than anything else out there with a guarantee. Come on, it's amazing. You get customers to subscribe to this. You get paid residual income every month. They're members. An insurance product where we now work with a company called Wealthmax and we do life insurance, critical illness. It's, it's amazing. So you get, you, all you got to do is connect them to the company, send a lead, get paid every single month. Isn't that crazy? Forex trading education. Now people are looking at how they can make money from home using their mobile phones. So we have a program called Arise Academy, where you can actually get customers and the customers are taught by a professional trader and traders on how they can use Forex and make money. Isn't that great? So not only do you get paid, you can teach your customers to get paid. And what we something we call web development, where we actually get businesses and we can teach them how, you know, by connecting them to our partner, they can use their websites to actually get more business through. So we got a range of products and services. Broadband is coming next. And so you can choose whatever, whichever service you want. And every time the customer pays their bill or they pay their membership subscription, you get paid residual income. You get the customer how many times? One time. Now you're thinking, how do the customers get a good deal? Is our competitive advantage. They take the actual advertising cost. You know, there's a lot of money spent in advertising to get customers. We get that out. This is called relationship marketing. So you go directly to the customer. The traditional advertising cost is gone. Now you get paid for that. Isn't that amazing? Now you're thinking, I'm sure, how, do, how much does it cost to get this business set up? To set up an online e-commerce business normally costs a lot of money. You and I know that. But look at this. Here you can get started with Nexonize as an independent business owner for just £199 enrollment fee. One time. That's it. Then to maintain or normally a business is very expensive. Here, you're going to get a personalized website, a control center that actually where you can monitor your business, customer and independent business owner support, and global operations all over the world like UK, USA, Mexico, Colombia, India, and you pay £20.40 a month. That's the maintenance. That's it. Now, that's look at the cost for you to get in. It's very little. What do you get? Five ways of getting paid. The income options. Personal residual income, your own customers, you get paid. Once you get the customer once, you actually get paid every single month on their revenue. Overriding residual income, you can get some like-minded people, build a team, and get paid on their actual customers as well. Rank advancement bonus. When you achieve a certain level, you go up a rank, means you get paid more, but they pay you to get promoted. Isn't that crazy? Fast start bonuses, you get started today and the next one or two months you achieve a rank, which a lot of people have done. They pay you double the money that you put in. Isn't that crazy as a fast start bonus? And when you reach a certain rank in our company, now the company treats you as uh, you know partners. So you, you get paid alongside with the company. So it's phenomenal. So personal residual income, up to 20% on your own customers every single month. So let me give an example. 
2,000 pounds of business you brought into Next Rice, you now get 20%, which is 400 pounds. Is it one month of every month? Every single month. It gets better. Look at this. You get started, you get a certain amount of business in your first 30 days, you're now qualified and you make 50 pounds as a bonus. It doesn't end there. You help a few people to do the same and you get a certain amount of business volume, you know, rank up to a position called ETT 100 or ETT 250. All right, now look at this. As an ETT 250, what does that mean? You now get paid every single month 250 pounds, like a salary, residual income. Isn't that crazy? Now, the beauty is this. I started just a month ago or two months ago. I'm an executive team trainer. I'm making 100 pounds every month. Now, listen, 100 pounds is not a lot of money, but it's clearing off my mobile phone bill and my spouse's mobile phone bill every month. Isn't that crazy? So that's the beauty about it. Every single month, I'm getting that cleared. Next, ETL 500, ETL 1000. You know what that means. ETL 1000, 1000 pounds every single month. What, what would you do if you made an extra 1000 pounds a month? Think about it. Your life starts to get much better, right? The pressure goes down. That's the beauty about it. Now look at this, team coordinator, 3000 to 5000 pounds. Now, not only that, when you become team coordinator 5000, you make 5000 pounds every month, plus for achieving that rank, you make 5000 just to hit that rank. Isn't that amazing? We got four people Remember, this company just started three months ago. We got four people on the rank of TC5000 already. Isn't that amazing? Now it gets even better. RD10, regional director. That means you make 10 grand every month. I mean, you hit that position, you make 10 grand. Regional vice president, 20,000, 50,000, and goes up to 100,000 a month. Senior vice president, up to 500,000 a month, and senior vice president crown. Now, let me tell you something. When I first saw this, I mean, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. An opportunity for you to follow a simple system and rank up to a position where you can actually be financially free beyond all means, phenomenal. I just had one question, how do I get started? And my next question was, who's gonna support me? And that's what Nexorize does. You can enroll as an IBO today, it takes a couple of minutes online. You can utilize a support system, participate in the trainings and start acquiring customers. Isn't that amazing? There's a system for you to follow to be a success story, isn't that crazy? Now, you know what? Here's what you got to do now. You've seen the information land. Here's, here are the two options. Either you can get started with us and make money and get plugged into the training system, or you can say, this is not for you and that's fine. You can become a customer and become a customer of uh, John and you can actually support him in his business. It's totally up to you. But let me tell you something, Ahmed. Someone like myself who's an engineer, really sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I got an opportunity to change my life by following a simple system. That's what I did. And I was able to do the most important thing in my life is go to my dad and my mom and say that they never have to work a day in their life again. Isn't that amazing? And so that's what made me choose Next Rise. Now, all I want to ask you is very simple. What did you like best about what you saw? Yes, the residual income, right? Yes, that's what got me as well. You're doing something once and getting paid over and over again. Do you see an opportunity for yourself, Amit? Yes, great. So based on what you said, let's get you started straight away. How's that? Great. Let's get you started. So there you go, friends. You got 20 minutes. I probably did that in like five, six minutes. So that's the actual way of, you know, doing the entire presentation with all the elements that I actually put in and I summarized. Now I started off by asking what the most successful leaders in next size have in common. Here's the answer. One, they're an effective presenter. They present the business effectively. Two, they create effective presenters. They actually create leaders in their team who will present effectively and they give feedback. Now here's a top tip. And I did this with a lot of my leaders. When I meet them, I say, hey, what is slide number six? And you know, you put them off. And if they are presenting consistently, they'll tell you what slide number six is the income options. So randomly when you're speaking to your leaders or your team members, ask them, hey, what is slide number four? So it's really powerful, it's a top tip. Plus, remember the, the objective of all of these friends. When I go to bed at night, one, I'm glad, that I'm going to bed with satisfaction, I can wake up with determination, but I'm also counting the number of people I've given them next rise as an opportunity that could change their life. So this is one of my affirmations. You know, if I presented to five people today next rise and say, hey, listen, I am proud, I say it loud, that I offered next rise to five people an opportunity to improve their lives. I go to bed with satisfaction, I wake up with determination because I genuinely made an opportunity, gave an opportunity to people to change their lives. Now, if they take it good, if they don't take it, move on but at least I'm following the system and system creates the results. I wanna close with this, the greatest ever earner in network marketing.
the individual who made the most amount of money and showed a lot of network marketers of how they can change their life with two amazing individuals called Peggy and Bill Britt, multi-millionaires, multi-millionaires. And they were asked, what is the secret for you being so successful? Here's what they said. I simply showed the plan to 1,200 people. 900 said no. 300 signed up. Out of those 300, 85 did something. Out of the 85, only 35 were serious. But out of those 35, 11 made me a millionaire. These two individuals were effective presenters. They created effective presenters in their team, and they talked about the law of numbers and the law of averages. So with that being said, friends, I hope you've understood the concept of mastering effective presentations.